Hey, and welcome back. I cannot get the smile off my face right now. Um, we are sitting here, Zoe and I are sitting here on Zoom with a beautiful woman all the way over in the United States, <laughs> Dr. Charity Kayumbe. We are so excited to have you here, Charity. And um, gosh, we're going to introduce you properly in a minute, but welcome to our podcast. <laughs> Yay! Thank you, Jenna. Thank you, Zoe. I'm so excited to be with you, ladies. You wonder women of God. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Man, we are so excited to be here with you. And oh, the energy is flowing in the room. We can feel it. <laughs> so, um, man, it's going to be a great day. And what a privilege it is to chat with you this morning. And gosh, we can already see that God is in this place ready to move. Um, and his joy is flowing. So, so glad yeah. you're joining us today. So good. And um, so Zoe, you met, um, you and Charity met a couple of years ago, didn't you? Why don't you tell us how did, how do you guys kind of know each other? Well, Jenna, I can tell you it was exactly, <laughs> not just sometime last year, exactly the 8th of February, 2020. Aww, wow. Because it's the day that my life changed so much. I am I met Charity after a season of, I think I spoke in the last podcast, a season of questions I was having where God revealed to me that there are angels with me. And I was like, what? I do not understand this. Um, I've never had a paradigm for angels. And so I've been asking all these questions. And then suddenly Charity came to New Plymouth in New Zealand, like my <laughs> town, my place. And um, oh, Charity, it just from the moment you walked in the room, the, the wisdom and the joy and everything that flowed from your mouth just gave me such a freedom. And so um, that's how I met Charity. And I'm so excited that you're here with, with us today, Charity. You are a blessing. You're an inspiration. And um, in your book, I have passed around to many people. And um, I know one of my friends says it's the only book she's ever read. <laughs> wow. Whoa. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to read a book, this is the book to read, right? <laughs> Yeah. Come on. So we, so we welcome you, Charity, and we know, you know, just the fact that you are, um, you know, we just want to honor who you are. We know a little bit of your story through what you've shared on your mm. online and your social media platforms that you've been raised by wonderful parents and have um, been taught to just be in tune with and to hear the voice of God from a young age, which we want to hear about soon. And um we just want to honor the fact that you are a an international teacher and speaker and um, dream interpreter and angel speaker <laughs> and <laughs> that you would come and join our little podcast is just honestly I what makes me want to cry can't put into words how much we thank you so thank you <laughs> wow well I love what you ladies are doing I've seen some of your other podcasts listened in a bit and I just love you talk about dream interpretation, you talk about hearing God's voice, and you make it so practical. And I'm like, this is what everybody needs. So <laughs> I'm really honored to be with you. And and Zoe, my goodness, I totally remember you. You made such an impression. <laughs> and yeah, sitting near the front. And I'm like, oh, this is good energy right over here. I'm like, yes, this is woman. So yes, I am really excited that we get to connect we've emailed a few times since then but this is awesome to be able to do this yeah together. yeah I mean Charity has um also written some amazing books with her dad Mark and um your newest one overflowing in the spirit oh gosh this has just been and I was emailing you about that but there are so many oh nuggets of revelation in there so we'll have to talk about that another time I think and let's get <laughs> on to everyday angels today because there's too much <laughs> yeah yeah so why don't we just um why don't we just let you um introduce anything you like about yourself maybe you could tell us something fun you've done recently and um yeah or anything else you'd like to know you might want to introduce your husband Leo a little bit but oh sure well um yes we live in upstate New York and um, we have a ministry of glory waves and we're passionate about the sacred supernatural, you know, making the mystical practical in people's everyday lives. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not going to give you a word from God. I'm going to teach you how to hear from God for yourself, right? I'm not going to interpret your dream for you. I'm going to teach you how to interpret your dream for yourself. And, and I'm not going to tell you just about the visions of angels that I see. 
I'm going to teach you how to open your spiritual eyes and look into the spiritual realm and have encounters with angels yourself. So that's why I'm so excited to talk with you guys about some of the practical, what this looks like in our, our everyday lives. But I get to do this all with my beloved husband of 18 years, Leo, and um, something fun we've done recently. That's a great question. <laughs> actually went he took me stand up paddle boarding ah which was super fun and it's really fun too because the last time we had ever even done this was actually when we were down under when we were in australia we went stand up paddle boarding at the great barrier reef and now that was epic because you know, <laughs> it's cool. and then you know you have your your mask and your your snorkel so then there's like a giant tortoise that's like so enormous and humongous and you can like jump into the water and go swimming with him under the water and he's like totally not afraid it was so fun we hung out with this giant tortoise so there were no tortoises <laughs> in buffalo but it was still super fun we went out because there's um the buffalo river right by this big city buffalo is where we we live outside of it and so there's like the waterfront there's big like sky rise you know big buildings and there's like a huge you know skyway a highway that goes over the top of the river so we're like stand up pedal boarding underneath it and along the the city skyline and and we went like all afternoon we went like six miles which is really far when you're doing it with your hands oh my goodness so it is a great workout and super fun so that's something fun we did recently I love it. I was just going to say what a workout because I've done that before and it is, it is like a hard work on your abs and on your thighs to try and keep in one place. It is a full body workout. You are absolutely right about that. Hello. <laughs> did you, did you have any fall-ins or can you manage to stay up most of the time? Um, I managed to stay up most of the time. <laughs> really hot it was a hot day so he was he was going into the water more often so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. on purpose definitely yeah yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> of course <laughs> Oh, oh gosh, that sounds, sounds awesome. so much fun. Oh man. So good to have date days, eh? They're the best. So oh very cool. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much. <laughs> awesome, Zoe. Should we get straight into it then? Yeah, come on. We've got some burning questions, you know. So we Yeah. Bring it up. <laughs> yeah. So, Charity, um, we would love to know. Why did you choose to call your book with the amazing Joe Brock that you wrote this with, um, Everyday Angels? Everyday Angels. Now, that is a good question. Um, you know, I think one of the reasons we decided to call the book Everyday Angels is because a lot of times we think, okay, we think of angels in the Bible. And then mm. if we ever think of them like around now, we think, well, maybe, you know, a pastor when he's ministering in a church, you know, on a Sunday morning in a worship service. And there's worship and there's ministry. Okay, maybe there will be angels there. Or maybe for the missionaries overseas, you know, sure, there could be angels there. But we just kind of put that far away from us. We make it unrelatable and not accessible to us. But, but you know, what does the Bible say? Because it doesn't really matter what I think about angels or what you think about angels, yeah. right? It, it matters what God thinks about angels. And Come on. You know, in the Bible, we do obviously see angels like, okay, Gabriel. He met Zacharias, right? He was a priest in the temple. So yes, angels are, you know, with the priest in the temple, with ministers in the church, but the angel also came to Mary, right? And she was at home. She was not a priest or a minister. She was not in church or seminary. <laughs> wow. She was just at home. So angels at home. And then, and then how about the shepherds, right? Hanging out in the field, angels showed up. So we got angels on the job right? And that's really where we do need our angels. More than anything else, we spend a lot more time outside the four walls of the church, right? And that's where we need the angelic assistance. Where are angels when we're at home? Where are angels when we're on the job or at school or in the gym? And, and you, before we started recording, you were telling <laughs> me an amazing testimony. You have to share. This is a perfect, perfect, perfect everyday angel testimony from your friend. I love it. Yeah, come on, Jenna. Let's hear about the angels on the farm. <laughs> yeah, so um, what, we were just telling Charity that um, one of the 
beautiful friends of ours who did our mentoring group, which is those small groups that we've talked about before. Um, we did the session where we talk about Charity's book and we talk about the angelic and, um, and, you know, everybody always is like, oh my goodness, what? <laughs> I've never really spent much time thinking about this or, oh, is that what I've seen? I thought that was my imagination. Yeah. And, um, Anyway, the very next day after we'd done the session, one of my friends that had done, was in the group messaged me and uh, she works on a farm and she's only a really little woman and she had been trying to get the cows to behave and to get in line and all morning it had been a struggle and they weren't doing what they were told and they, have, you know, you can't make a big animal <laughs> do what, it, especially not <laughs> multiple not, rather than just one. There was heaps. No. So, so she had this thought, hang on, we talked last night about how there are angels with me. So Jesus, I need your angels to help me get these cows into line so I can get on with my day. And she said, literally that moment, the cows just sort of formed lines and behaved, <laughs> got into line and did exactly what she needed them to do with her doing absolutely nothing different. So you just said, you know, we need the angels on the job. And that's a perfect example. <laughs> <laughs> I love it so <laughs> oh that's so good oh gosh I love that so much that yeah we we need them we need our angels with us every day and gosh life changes when you start to become aware of that you're not alone that you're working with incredible provision that God has given you your angels it's just exciting life changes forever mm. and yeah. even what even what you said there charity that it doesn't matter what you or I think it's they're actually biblical the angels are actually it's what God thinks this this is the same across the board with any topic really isn't it that you know it's yes. what God thinks that is important and mm. I'm just wondering you know maybe some of the people that are listening um I probably previously could have related might be a little bit hesitant around the area of angels and the angelic and um you know I'm just wondering you have got such a real solid biblical foundation of the truth of what God believes here so what are maybe some of your you mentioned a few there with Mary and the shepherds so what are some of your favorite scriptures that um that help you understand more of the angelic around us yeah some of my favorite verses you know one of the most probably popular angel kind of go-to verses psalm 91 11 and 12 right God gives his angels charge over us to guard us in all of our ways they lift us up in their hands so we don't, you know, crash our foot against a stone. And, and I love that because, okay, we do have guardian angels, right? It says right there, angels to guard us. So those are guardian angels, right? Number one. And then number two, they guard us in all of our ways, mm. which means they're always with us, right? They don't leave because they have yeah. to be there to protect us always. So so right there, we get a, a whole lot of revelation about angels, you know, and, and what they're there for. Um, another verse, the New Testament, Hebrews 1.14 gives us a huge insight into God's design and intention for angels. Um, yeah. It says that angels are ministering spirits sent to serve and assist those who will inherit salvation. So that's us right? Yeah, I, mean. <laughs> I love that verse because there's so much latitude and freedom. Serve us, assist us, whatever we have going on. If we have cows that are not doing the right thing, okay, <laughs> he's an assistance with the cows. Well, that verse applies, right? And, and the word in the Greek, you know, for serve, it's, um, it's almost, it's almost like a waiter would serve, you know, mm -hmm. would assist you, would help you. And, and the thing of it is, you know, if a waiter at a restaurant comes, and I ignore them, they're not going to be much of assistance to me, right? If I don't give them my order, if I don't yeah, talk well. to them, ignore them, don't look at them, don't want to interact with them, well, they're not going to be able to fulfill their responsibility that they are designed and intended to, unless I do my part. So, so again, that just gives us, you know, God's perspective of angels, what he's wanting them to do in our lives. And you know, it's, it's really interesting. I think sometimes we might think, well, maybe in the Old Testament, you know, maybe they needed angels, but my goodness, in the New Testament, we're believers, okay? We have Jesus living inside of us. Mm. We have God the Father with us. We have Holy Spirit on us. You know, why in the world would we need angelic assistance? 
So we just need to say, well, are there any believers in the New Testament, right? Who have Jesus in them and Holy Spirit on them, and they still they needed angelic assistance. And, you know, throughout the New Testament, you know, how about Peter, right? Yeah. He kept getting thrown into jail, and, uh, and it was an angel that kept breaking him out of jail, right? I mean, <laughs> Father God himself could have gone and rescued Peter. Instead, he used an angel. You know, the same wow. thing with He's in the storm, right? And he's afraid he's going to be shipwrecked. Everybody's going to die. An angel tells him, he gives him encouragement. He tells him prophetically, really, oh, don't worry. You're going to be safe. Your crew, you're all going to live through this. Now, Holy Spirit himself could have whispered that in Paul's ear, but instead God chose to use an angel. And the same thing with, you know, Revelation, right? 22 chapters of angelic yeah. interaction and conversation, and the remarkable thing is, at the beginning of Revelation, it says Jesus and Angel and John were all there together, like the three of them. But then it was an angel that proceeded to give John the tour of heaven. Jesus was right there. He could have given John the tour of heaven, but he said, oh, let's use the angel, right? Let's interact with the angel. Let's have some angelic conversation. And Jesus wasn't threatened by that. He didn't, you know, cut that off in any way. And and so we say, oh, well, if New Testament believers are doing this, I mean, the Bible was written as an example, right? For us, our lives are supposed to match this. And then probably the last scriptures that really just, you know, confirm and affirm our wanting to interact with angels is just to look at Jesus, right? He is our model. He is our example. And, and Jesus is the son of God. Jesus is God himself. If anybody could get along without needing angels to minister to them, it would be Jesus. That's right. But we see Jesus being strengthened by an angel, right? Um, he was ministered to by angels in Gethsemane, yeah. in the wilderness. It wasn't a one-time thing. It was over and over. He's receiving strengthening and ministry by angels. So, oh my goodness, obviously the student is not above her teacher. So if Jesus is receiving angelic ministry, okay, sign me up, right? I want <laughs> it too. <laughs> oh my oh, gosh, just like revelation after revelation just landing on us. Oh, I can feel the freedom. I can feel the freedom being released as you just release those words, Charity. Guys, just receive it and um, receive what God is doing. There is a clear biblical mandate for us here. I love you. You, you know, you and your dad say this. I can live the Bible. <laughs> yes, we can live the Bible. Let's be biblically normal. Let's let's live all the things that God has for us. And um, I've still got a few more questions, but if you're loving what Charity has to say, don't forget to register for her free course that is coming up this week, starting the 13th of October. You do not want to miss this. This is amazing and such a generous offer from Charity um, and her teaching where she will just break this down even further for you. So um, go ahead and register straight after the podcast. <laughs> we'll have the link there for you. <laughs> oh I, my goodness. I've got um, actual goosebumps and we've talked in previous episodes that often when I, when we, the way that we feel the Holy Spirit and it for me often is in crying, I get teary eyed and just that happened just now when you talked about the waiter and how if Ooh. we were to oh yeah if we were to ignore a waiter that's come to the table and we just all keep talking within ourselves saying when is our food going to arrive and you know I'm just thinking because that's what we you know we would start to complain wouldn't we why haven't they cooked our meal where's our drinks why you know there's nothing here but we've never told them what we want so good that is an excellent point I think so often we're like God why haven't you helped me or why aren't you answering me or why aren't you whatever oh well we have ignored the the one who's bringing the provision or the healing or the instruction or whatever it is that we're you know wanting from God biblically speaking angels did all of these things so you're yeah. absolutely right wow <laughs> Wow. And I love, I love, you know, the, just the way that my mind works. I love to think that the way that you've just sort of shared there, that it likely isn't that there is just one angel that would come like one waiter comes per table, right? It would be like, you know, to take the analogy further, you'd, it would be like sitting there and being surrounded, you know, if you're sitting with your family, being surrounded by all of your guardian angels and all of them hearing and being like, guys, 
I'll do what you need. I've been given authority to come and to, um, you know, listen to what, to what you need, but talk to me, tell me. <laughs> well, you're absolutely right. I mean, the biblical basis for that, the angels of God surround and encamp those who fear the Lord. So yes, mm. they do surround us and there are, there are myriads of angels, right? Innumerable companies of angels. There are enough angels to, to go around. God is not rationing them out. We don't need to be <laughs> afraid, you know, of, of what we ask one, oh, it's not, you know, there's not enough. No, there's plenty. We serve a God of abundance. So Amen. you're absolutely right. Amen. Oh, so, so good. Oh, this is precious time to give a charity. We're really appreciating everything that you're landing on us. Um, so um, I just um, was going to ask that there's a question, there's a part in your book called The Game Changer. This is my favorite story when you talk about um, introducing, I think we've spoken a little bit about it already, but like introducing your angels is like Joe, like when Leo, sorry, comes around to your house and meets your family. Um, yeah. Yes. And um, how like God was saying to you, well, you would you bring Leo around and not introduce him to your your friends or your parents? Would he just sit there and you know um only talk to you? <laughs> You're right, absolutely. You know, it, it kind of started. The revelation kind of began to unfold. Um, you know, my angels. You know, they would tell, they would say things like, you know, it's it's great to be about Father's business with you. You know, and. Um, we love working, you know, with, for father with you, or, or they would, if I was like upset about something and I was kind of stressing out, they would say, oh, don't worry, my lady, you know, father has a plan. Father always has a plan. <laughs> and it kind of, finally, it got on my nerves a little bit. And I'm like, not to be a total jerk here, but <laughs> you guys get off calling him father. Okay. He is my father. All right. I am the daughter of God here. <laughs> and so then they proceed to enlighten me, which is scripturally, that's what angels do. And, you know, angels enlighten Daniel, they enlighten Zechariah. And so they took me to the book of Job, where over and over in the book of Job, how does scripture refer to angels as the sons of God, mm. sons of God, like all oh, the sons of God shouted for joy when God created the world, right? Before we were here, before the world was here, the angels were here and they were getting excited celebrating with God creating us. Oh. So, okay, number one revelation, they're his sons. So they're his family, right? And then as if that wasn't enough though, I'm still like, but God, I, I just want to focus on you. I don't want to hurt <laughs> you or offend you or disappoint you. Mm. Jesus, you're the lover of my soul. Holy spirit, you're my best friend. You know, Trinity, that's what I'm about. And I still was just like, well, maybe angels, you know, they're just like a little nice, you know, add on accessory, you know, an opening act of some kind, just, you know, and God's like, seriously, like you said, that was the story. Jesus said to me, come on. If when you were starting to date Leo, if, if every time you invited Leo over to your house to meet your family, he always declined. You said, come over, meet my friends, hang out with the people in my world. And he's like, no charity. I want to focus on you. <laughs> I love you. So I only want to interact with you exclusively. I don't want to meet your family. I don't want to talk to your friends. Now, oh, does he really love me? Well, he's not really good at showing me, right? <laughs> and so it is with the angels, these sons of God. I mean, angels have been hanging out with Jesus in eternity, you know, forever. They've been in relationship. We just show up a few decades ago. So we honor Jesus when we honor his Wow. His friends. We honor Father God when we honor his sons. So that's why we do it. It's not angels for angels' sake. It's, oh, we are honoring Trinity when we honor these sons of God that are part of the supernatural family they created. God is father of all, and that includes the angels. Wow. I, we honor Jesus when we honor his friends. That is that's a little bit of a mic drop moment really isn't it yeah. <laughs> and I just think oh so yeah the fact that he has surrounded himself with his angels that that's who he is constantly you know we um we love as well um it talks about oh no the verse scripture is actually going to go from me but um about in the throne room of God and how there it's in revelation but how there's 
it works out to be like tens of millions of angels mm. in the throne room of God. And just, you know, if you take a second to stop and to actually picture what it would be like to be with tens of millions of people, for one, let alone the angelic angels, if these are the ones that he's surrounding himself by, gosh, it's such a, you know, that's a really big um, truth bomb to think, um, well, I want to honor those that Jesus has surrounded himself with as well. Mm. You're absolutely right. If we are not comfortable with angels, we are not going to be comfortable in heaven. That's for <laughs> sure. That's what you pointed out. Myriads and myriads, millions and millions. And, and again, just like you said, they surround his throne. And over and over in scripture, God calls himself. He's like, I am the Lord of hosts. Yeah. I am the Lord of angel armies, right? He doesn't separate himself and say, oh, these lowly, you know, servants that have nothing to do with me. He's like, nope, I'm identifying myself. I'm the Lord of them. So mm -hmm. if God himself identifies himself with angels that closely, that intimately, again, it's, oh, we can honor them too. And then we are giving glory and honor to God when we do that. Amen. Amen. Oh man, Charity, I just want to honor you for a moment and just say thank you for pushing through for this revelation to bring mm -hmm. breakthrough for us we know that you know this kind of revelation comes at a cost like you would have spent hours days months years seeking God's heart that we get to get this in a moment in a half an hour podcast but God I just want to bless charity for what she's sown for us God that you would just multiply over her life over and over again that we could take a seed of that in a moment and put it in our hearts God that you could let it multiply and Lord the revelation that nothing is wasted from her years of persevering and putting through for this God for the places that she's traveled around the world to speak this in places where she hasn't been accepted straight away God I just want to bless her God I want to bless her family mm -hmm. and I'm just increase her to overflowing for the revelation that she carries um that is so significant and so powerful that you've laid the ground you've been there and you've you've plowed the ground for us that we can come and enjoy this moment mm. with you I just want to honor you charity you're so beautiful thank you for 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 everything that you're sowing into us yeah wow Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys. I bless you back. <laughs> thank you. And I just, yeah, and I just so agree. And um, Charity, you've got a quote in the book that I think was my absolute favorite line that I read. And it says, angels are not a spiritual luxury God has given us, but a dynamic part of, a of his supernatural plan. I'm just going to read it one more time. Angels are not a spiritual luxury that God has given us, but a dynamic part of his supernatural plan. That is just mind blowing because I think the angelic does, it fits into a, a spiritual luxury is a great way to word that. It's like, oh, well, you know, that's over there. That's for the pastors, like you said earlier. But um, can you unpack that statement a little bit more for us? And how, how does that you know, what does that look like practically? Mm, I would love to. Yes. <laughs> well, we know, I mean, the Bible talks about us, you know, being strong and doing exploits. I mean, exploits, holy cow. That's like some epic next level <laughs> kind of big deal stuff, right? We want to do that stuff. Yeah. We can't do that stuff. Obviously we cannot do that on our own. We need Holy Spirit's anointing, number one, but we just talked about all these people that were anointed by Holy Spirit in the Bible, and they needed something else in addition to Holy Spirit's anointing, wow. and that was angels. We see the angels strengthened and rescued and instructed, you know, Peter and Paul and John and Jesus, and, you know, I think maybe kind of like an analogy to, to make sense of it. I mean, we could talk about soccer um, my husband is from Zambia and I know Zoe is from South Africa and in yeah, Africa, yeah. Okay, soccer is like a big deal, right? Yes. Huge. It's Bafana, huge. Bafana. <laughs> <laughs> the Fofa so, Zellas. Yeah, exactly. Right. And so my husband, Leo, he grew up playing soccer since he was like five years old. And, um, so he's really, really good at it. 
And even now, he is playing uh, tonight. He's in a league. He is the team captain. They were the league champions. And he's just all about oh. soccer, right? And so he's good at it. So, okay, so just imagine, for sake of my analogy, okay, we have this team, right? And there's a coach and there's some people on the team, like Leo, who are like, awesome. And then there are some people like me, okay? <laughs> Not quite as awesome with the soccering, all right? <laughs> oh, then, and this, this kind of goes back to what Jenna was saying about the waiter. But just imagine we go out on the field, okay? And me and other people like me, we're just... We're just kicking the ball between us and we are never passing the ball to Leo and the good guys. Okay. And then we go in and complain to the coach. Oh my gosh, we need help. You know, we're not, we're not accomplishing our goals. We're not scoring our goals. Right. And, and then the coach is like, um, are you kidding me right now? Okay. Pass the ball to Leo. Leo is bigger than I am. He is stronger than I am. He is faster than I am. He has been playing soccer much longer than I have played it. He knows all the strategies, right? For his own team and the strategies of the others. And, and so if I could just pass the ball to him, some stuff is going to happen. <laughs> okay. And so to just apply this to our whole angelic conversation, we're partnering with the angels, right? It is the great co-mission. We are co-laboring, co-operating, um working for the king. Okay. So the coach, obviously that's God. There's the people like me that are doing the best they can. That's us. We're people, we're humans. And <laughs> you know, we're, we're doing that, but then we've got the Leos. Okay. And those are the angels and they are bigger than us and they're stronger oh, than God. us, they're faster than us. Right. They have been doing this whole spiritual warfare thing, this whole serving God thing way longer than we have. They know how to do it well. They know how to score the goals, right? Or accomplish the goals for the kingdom. And, and so they understand the strategy of the enemy even better than we do. So what we want to do instead of like, oh, hey, God, give me some help out here. <laughs> he's going to be like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> Angels, hello. Yeah. Them. Engage with them. Let's get some teamwork here in this supernatural team. And so we pass the ball to angels, right? So what does that mean to pass the ball to the angels? We're talking about, at the very least, we just, you know, we start by acknowledging them, right? Just like the waiter, we, we need to acknowledge them. We can honor them. We ask for their assistance. We welcome their presence. We release them. We activate them, right? We commission them. And, and how do we do that? We know Psalm 103, 20, angels excel in strength and they hearken to to the voice of the word of the Lord. So when we give voice to God's word, when we speak the word, the written word of God, and, or give voice to the rhema, the prophetic bubbling up within us, that activates the angels, okay? That's, that's interacting with them. That's passing them the ball and getting yes. them working with us so that we can actually, we can do this, you know? They're just kind of waiting. They're waiting for us to, to say yes, because you know, it says in Psalms that the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he's given to the sons of men. So that's us. It is our responsibility to make our part of earth look just like heaven. And we can't do that by ourselves. We need the company of heaven to partner wow. with us in that. And so that's what we want to do. We want to honor them and welcome them and receive their assistance and their ministry, just like the disciples did and, and just like Jesus did. And so that we're, we're partnering with them in strategic kingdom coalition and then we can we can score the goals we can win the goals we can accomplish father's purposes and bringing heaven to earth oh my goodness charity oh. <laughs> i'm not uh, um i yeah that soccer analogy is so fantastic because I am the kind of person that gets scared when the ball comes towards me because I don't want everyone running at me and kicking. <laughs> so I get rid of it as quick as possible. So how wonderful to know that, you know, there are, there's the angels that are there. And I love, um, you know, when we give, vo well, you just see, when we give voice to the written word of God, it engages and activates the angels oh, around us. Come on. You know, and that's just that whole thing. I know you write about, if you're listening today, grab yourself a copy of this book. We've got one that we're giving away, but um, grab yourself a copy because Charity really unpacks how, um, we're not going to go into it right now, but about how 
we're not talking or worshiping angels. We're not talking to them and um, giving our own selfish orders. That's something entirely different. Any interaction that we're talking about today that we're having with the angels is talking about the written word of God. It's the three of us, the, all the partners of us are lining up with what he is saying and what he is doing. And I love, Charity, that you've also written in there about how you can tell that this has changed our lives. <laughs> 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 but just about how um who better to help us know what God likes and how he likes to be worshipped oh I'm gonna cry who better to let us know than the ones that have been around him since the beginning of time who better to be like hey Holy Spirit loves it when you do this like it's like having a secret agent on the inside that is like I don't need to keep it secret. You're welcome. Come on. In. <laughs> oh my All right. I, I couldn't agree more. That's, that's, I, I agree that that is one of the ways that angels help us serve God better, love God better, right? We want to love God in the way that he wants to be loved. Angels have been seeing him be loved and worshiped forever. You know, and what is he, what is he like? What is his favorite? You know, mm -hmm. and, and I give the example um, in the book about Esther. Remember in the Old Testament, Esther was to spend a night with the king. And they said, oh, well, you can take one thing that you want to go into the king. And Esther was a smart cookie, right? She's like, I don't know the king. I have no idea what he wants me to bring. So what did she do? She went to the king's eunuch, Haggai, and said, hey, you know the king. You've been serving the king. You know what he likes. You know what he wants. What do you recommend? She did that. That's what she took. And she found favor with the king. So angels, in a way, we could say, oh, they're kind of like our personal head eyes, right? They've been serving the king. And we can get that inside scoop, yeah. just like inside secret agent scoop, right? Oh, this is how I can serve father. This is how I can love him in his love language and bless him even more. So that's one more way that angels help us just just love God even more. Oh, honestly, <sighs> this is amazing. Thank you so much. I There's so much to <sighs> take away and chew over on this. And we just want to encourage you that are listening to a couple of things. Number one, um, if you haven't thought about angels, haven't talked about them with Jesus, with Holy Spirit yet, go and have a conversation and do it today because there's a reason you're listening to this. There's a reason that you've come across this episode. And um, we really believe that God is just opening eyes and ears and understanding to what's happening around you. Like Charity said at the beginning of this episode, whether we believe it or you believe it doesn't matter on this issue because God is the one that's created it. And he says that this is how it is. So we encourage you to do that. And also, um, Zoe mentioned earlier that um, Charity and her amazing family are so incredibly generous that every month they offer a free teaching um, of their subscriptions that you can buy at any other time of the year but once a month one of them is offered as free and it's nine sessions in a whole entire week of um, daily videos and this month just happened to be which is so funny it just happens to be the charity's everyday angels course so, Charity, how can people sign up to that? Yes, you can jump over on my website, which is glorywaves.org. So, G L O R Y W A V E S, glorywaves.org um, slash events. There it will tell you all about the upcoming events. And I think there's even a banner across the bottom of the screen right now that says, hey, sign up for our free event. And if you click on it, it'll take you to all the information about it. You just put in your email address and um, you'll get notified when the free video is posted. You can watch a couple every day over a week's time and you get the inside scoop. The videos really complement the book. So it would be awesome for you to, to get mm. in on that for sure. Mm. Totally. Oh, that's so exciting. We, we will also have the links for you. But also remember, these videos are not there forever. They're just there for that week. So you really have to make this a priority. And it just seems like Holy Spirit has his hand on it this week, that this has all come together at this perfect timing. So 
Um, I think they yeah. start on the 13th, don't they? Yeah. Is it the 13th? Yeah, that's yeah, right. So a few days yeah. away. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. Gosh, I'm just excited for the freedom that people are receiving, that I'm receiving right now. I'm like, oh! I thought I was excited before. Now I'm like next level excited. I'm like, oh gosh, I just know. Really want to encourage you guys out there that God is so much bigger. We have just got so much to learn about his kingdom. He is for us. He is for us. He is for us. And um, and he just wants to bless us in every way that he can. And so um, we just want to bless you, Charity. Mm. Hopefully we can do this again. Yeah. <laughs> Lily would love to anytime. Awesome. So thanks to everybody for joining in. Go and check out glorywaves.org forward slash events. And also um, we're going to pop in the d- description of this episode, but all of the other ways that you can find Charity as well. So um. So we bless you all and um, thank you so much for joining us, Charity. It has been amazing as we expected it would be. (laughs) Oh, I have had a blast. I love you guys. Thank you so much for having me. (laughs) We'll see you all next time. And as always, feel free to contact us if you have any questions about anything we've talked about today. Pop us a message on our Instagram or on Facebook Messenger or an email. We always love hearing